Hi, this is Christy with Sapphire Skies Farm, and I love to garden, and I love to see other people's gardens, and since I love to see other people's gardens, I thought I would share mine in case you wanted to see my garden. Um, I think we can all learn from each other. I have been gardening for about nine years, and I remember my mom had a really small patch of a garden. We grew up in Palm Springs and it was really hot summers so she had to garden where there would be like almost complete shade the whole day because it was so hot and um, I'm really glad she did that little bit of gardening that she did because when I met Tyler and his family did some gardening um, I don't know we decided together that that was something we wanted to do together and it's been wonderful. I love it. It's a great hobby to have um, as a husband and wife because it's very rewarding and it's fun to learn things together. So with that being said, what I'm trying to get around to saying really is that even though I've been gardening for nine years, that really only means I've had experience with growing tomatoes nine times. It takes a long time for a gardener or a farmer to really become an expert in something by learning just from themselves. So what I want you to do is when you're done watching this video, please share some tips that you have for other gardeners in the comments below. If you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and then if you'd like to be notified when new videos are made, you can click the little bell button and it will tell you when um, I have posted new videos. Anyways, let's head over to the garden. I'm going to start today in the straw bale garden and um, I'll talk to you about that once we're over there. Just heading in. So this here are my second year bales. So last year I had all of these bales here, all planted with tomatoes and peppers and other herbs and stuff. And so this year they're on year two and I can plant things that need to be more closely planted to the ground in them. So that's why we've got the corn growing here. So last week it was really short and I'm amazed how much it's grown in just a week. Right behind me, I noticed that the kitten's mommy over here, Miss Flames, has come to get a drink before she goes back to her little babies. I don't see any little froggies nearby. Hopefully we will find some frogs as we're going through the garden. That's something I've added to the garden this year. I have wanted them for a long time. Um, but this is the first year I have introduced them to the garden because we now have a pond. Um, frogs eat a lot of bugs, so I thought, hey, why not bring things in to eat the bugs instead of trying to poison the bugs? So then we won't have poison on our food and I don't have to be so worried about what we're eating. Um, we also have lizards in the garden that are eating a lot of bugs every day, but uh, I just thought I'd add something else that would eat maybe different bugs, right? This is a pomegranate. And then I have pollinators all around it. Here is um, some black-eyed Susans that haven't yet opened. And these are bachelor buttons. I love bachelor buttons. Here I have an artichoke. And this is the largest of all my artichokes, but it hasn't yet flowered. But I'm sure it will. Here's the corn. I have an onion that was planted in the winter that is still growing here. I put my first squash into the garden this week. This is a pink banana squash. A friend of mine grows these and gave me some seeds. And I'm excited to see how it grows. Here under the corn you can see the green beans. Um, corn, green beans, and squashes all growing together are three sisters garden. 
I plan to put in a lot more squashes. I thought I'd do it this week, but with getting the goats, <laughs> so much, so much has been going on. <laughs> But the corn is now up to one, two, three, the third, almost to the fourth um, wire here. All throughout the garden, you'll notice that I have T-posts. Let me get closer to this one so you can see. I have T-posts going straight into the ground, and then I have wire going through from one T-post to the next T-post. And it's at various heights. I mean, probably like six inches is the average, but when they were growing last year, I might have made them a little bit closer together, like two or three inches, four inches, I don't know. Anyways, it helps me to like tie things up without having big old huge tomato cages and all kinds of stuff like that that aren't reusable. This loofah plant overwintered last year. You may have seen my other video. Called, Does Lufa come from the ocean? Or something like that. Uh, anyways, it does not. Lufa comes from the garden. So I have my first out here. This is the first Lufa that has been flowered. One more here. So this part right here is not actually the flower. this was the flower and it's been pollinated or not it will either turn into a lupa or it won't so coming over here and looking at this artichoke you can tell really the difference between the two artichokes they're both on the same side of the garden the real main difference here is that this one is on kind of a slope and a lot of the water runs down and I didn't mulch this one where I really heavily mulched the other one so I imagine that this artichoke is getting a lot less nutrients and that's why it's trying to flower and reproduce quickly where the other one that I had just shown you had no flowers yet and it was really big and lush. I had a, a lot of compost. You can see kind of down through here the remnants of my compost um, that I had put on there. They're, they all have a lot of compost. I filled up the same size bucket for each artichoke plant um, they were all at the same size, but this one in particular is really struggling because a lot of runoff happens from this one. And like I said before, I did not mulch this one. I just really wanted to be able to show the difference between mulching and not, why it's so important to mulch. Um, and since artichoke can come back year after year, it is not in a straw bale. It's actually planted in a very slightly raised bed just raised so that I could have the hardware mesh underneath and the gophers can't come up. Uh, but hopefully we'll get year after year artichokes here. Over here, I harvested this week a whole bunch of cauliflower. But you can see here, one of them is still coming, still growing. Looks like a slug left its mark. I don't put any pesticides on the garden at all. I only use traps or other animals to try to keep the slugs at bay or other um, bugs. So sometimes you get things like this, some damage. You can see the outer leaves have a lot more damage. I um, kind of was really busy with planting and everything. At the beginning of spring, the kids got pulled out of school, you know, and so I didn't come out every night to check the garden for slugs. Um, and so these kind of quickly got eaten alive. But now you can see I've come out a few times and checked on, pulled slugs off. And you can see now these leaves are actually doing a lot better. They're not getting eaten. So if you want to do garden with no pesticides, you really have to do the work. <laughs> come out and pick off the bugs yourself. Um, here I have a grape vine. This is the first year grape vine. Uh, it is really being overshadowed by this volunteer tomato that has come over my fence there. <laughs> it's got a lot of tomatoes on it. So I'm not gonna complain about it, but it's funny. And here is another cauliflower. 
This one's gonna get a lot of sun, so it will probably end up kind of yellow if I don't end up covering it up. If it was bushier, I could like really tie these up, which maybe I'll be able to do to cover the cauliflower and keep it more white. This is that um, roll out flowers I showed you last week. There's the box here. It has a bunch of little seedlings but they're not doing super great. I'm not completely convinced that this is the way to do flowers, but it's still an experiment. I'm gonna keep trying it out. We'll see how it goes. This was a giant kale. <laughs> it was so full. And I chopped it all back because I am gonna plant my pumpkins right where that is. So I've left it there because I want to remember where I want my pumpkin to go. I'm gonna plant, like dig down and put a fish head in there. And then I'll plant my pumpkin seed and pull that last bit of kale out there. Here we have some green beans that are really starting to grow. They're still really young, as is this corn. This corn will get really tall and the green beans will grow up the corn and feed the corn as it grows. I love bachelor buttons. They're just so cute. It's always important to bring pollinators into the garden. So if you plant flowers that pollinators like near your plants that you want pollinated, you're more likely to get a larger harvest. So as we walk through the garden, you'll see that I have several different types of flowers. Some of them are companion flowers for the plants near them, meaning that they help the plant that it's specifically next to. And some of them I've just planted for um, pollinators to come in and enjoy, and hopefully they'll stay in the garden. Just turning back now to look at that corn. By the time the summer is over, it will be all the way up here. It's about halfway to its full potential. Here, I've planted some black-eyed Susans to bring in pollinators. The kids still think these are sunflowers. It's really cute. Planted a million sunflowers last year, and now the kids think anything that's yellow is a sunflower, but it's not. This is marigold. Many plants in the garden will benefit from being planted near marigold, including peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers, anything in the brassica family like kale, Brussels sprouts, broccoli. So I just spread this all over the garden. A lot of plants are found by insects, by smell. Not many bugs like the smell of marigolds. So we have them all over the place. You'll see the bright orange throughout. Got some more peppers back here and back there. Here's the third artichoke plant I have in the garden. You can see that this one is healthier than the second, but not as healthy as the first. It was the last one I actually planted. Um, the rest of them all went on in about the same time, and then I just wasn't sure what I was going to do with this one. But it seems that it's doing okay. It is flowering. You can see I still have a few more kale in the corn area. I need to pull those out. I've made kale chips this week <laughs> and eaten lots of salads. And the animals have all enjoyed some. But I really, like I said, want to get my p 
pumpkins and other squashes in before it gets too late in the season. So the kale need to come out and the squashes need to go in. This is the sweet potatoes. So I grew these from slips on my kitchen counter, just from a sweet potato in water, and then pulled those slips off and put them in the garden. And I have them in buckets because I think that it will be easier to get to the sweet potatoes if they're in buckets I can just dump out rather than having to dig into the ground. The ground here is clay, it gets really hard. And it, um, it's hard to dig into. So I put it in the buckets and then I use some of my second year straw to heavily mulch on top. And it seems to really be working out doing that. I forgot to mention that this pepper and melon bed is second year straw bales. <clears throat> They've really composted down. I, I've shown in other videos before, but see, I'm just pulling this straw back to show you what it looks like inside. So that was all straw. And in just one full year, it's really turned into some great compost and the plants really thrive in it. It's worked out great for me. Instead of building raised beds, I planted in straw bales that I had conditioned for two weeks. Look for videos on how to do that before you just plant straight into a straw bale. Um, after they had been conditioned, I was able to plant right away into those bales. And for me, that worked out great. We had just moved to our new house and I didn't have time to figure out where I wanted all my raised garden beds to go. Um, we have a lot of gophers here. Everything in my garden that's planted has hardware mesh under it because yikes, gophers. I put out a little dish of water that I empty and refill every day when I water the garden for the froggies, just in case they don't make it back to the pond. This is nasturtium. It's also another companion flower for the garden. So you'll see those all around. Just for me and because of my love, of chamomile. This is my first little buds about to emerge. Chamomile. Here I have a lemon cucumber plant. This is really fun. You can actually see both the male and female flowers on this one. So this, actually I guess not the flowers, but this is the female part of the plant and this is the male. Oh, I guess there's not actually female flowers. So this just had a flower on it. You can see the very end here. So the bees need to get from the male flower into the female flower to pollinate the cucumber. These will fall off, so don't get worried if you see um, a bunch of flowers that have fallen off of your cucumber plants or squashes because the males will always fall off over time. Hopefully the females will have gotten pollinated. I'm hoping this one got pollinated. I got one of these already. And I just said that this was a lemon cucumber, but I'm sorry, it is not. This is a pickling cucumber. This is my passion fruit vine. I have it growing all along the back wall of the garden. I'm hoping that someday it will fill in all the way. And I have three of them growing. I planted them last year, one of the first things we planted, because I wanted to give it the most chance to really grow and fill out. And so it's growing up this hardware mesh, and then I have wires going across the top of the T-post to try to hold it. And it looks like it's even growing up past the wires. I'm sure if I had something taller here, it would grow even higher, but what I really wanted to do is to spread out. One of the wonderful things besides the fruit is the cool flowers. It looks like an alien. It's really neat. I love passion fruit in my smoothies. It's so yummy. Hello, strawberries. So I have my strawberries up on forks like this to try to keep the bugs from getting to them. 
when they sit on the ground, it's so much easier for the slugs and other bugs that like strawberries, like earwigs or really pulleys to get to them. It looks like this one has found its fate. I'll harvest that and just chop that bottom part off. But before I used this fork trick, I would get very few strawberries that came out that actually had no bug damage. And now I'm more having very few that have bug damage. So it's been really beneficial. I just, while I'm watering, I come out and I prop those up on forks. So you'll see those as we walk through the garden here. I have almost the whole garden now finished on a drip irrigation system. Just the parts you can buy at Home Depot. There's like the tubing here and then this is soaker hose. And then each tip has a plug on it. And I just kind of like wrap it around the plants. Trying to get them some nice good watering. It used to take me like an hour or more to water the whole garden. Well, really the whole property. And so this is starting to save me so much time. It takes a lot of work to get it in. You have to find the time and force it. But by the time I get it all done, it's so worth it. It saves me so much time. I found a lizard. Thank you for joining my garden, Mr. Lizard. Eat those bugs. Artichoke number four. We've already eaten a few off this one. I'm gonna come out and eat that one real soon. If you let it sit too long, it'll go to flower and then you can't eat it. So I gotta get the ones off that are ready to be eaten before they turn into flowers. This is a muncher cucumber. I've not seen any flowers emerging yet but I did want to show. I, like I said it before, I have the T-posts and then I have the wires. Can you see the wire? Cat, stop bumping my hand. <laughs> Hi, Nora. She will hang out with me the whole time I'm in the garden. Hi, mama. Um, so I have the wire here and then I use just that stuff that you tie up plants with. It's like wire with plastic coating on the outside. And I draw a line all the way up to the top and all the way down and then I just kind of like help the plant at the very beginning to start to stay off the ground and vine up. Eventually it will just do it on its own. You can see here some of the tendrils are starting to come out. They'll start finding things to grab onto and doing this itself but at the very beginning I just kind of lightly push the cucumber plant around that wire to keep it strong and stable. I've got more sweet potatoes with second year straw bales in here. These have some soil on the bottom and then about this much of it is straw. And I planted the sweet potato slip down into the soil and then uh, it will still root through anywhere it gets moisture. So it will still root through the straw. But this, this one in particular I planted with like the most inexpensive Kellogg garden soil in the bottom. And then the straw on top. Just kind of doing some science experiments on what will work the best. And then these ones here I use like some really nice garden soil. And you can see that these leaves are a lot more fragile looking. The bugs have actually gotten to these where they haven't actually gone to those. It's interesting. Some more strawberries in the straw bales here. Just gonna make sure this guy gets forked up. And hopefully the kids will find that today. get closer to that one. Here's another cucumber. So here you can actually see the female with the flower on it. And then let's see if we can see that one. That is the 
the male flower. So this is their female flower and male flower together makes cucumber. So this is another one that I had tied up. It looks like it got some slack. So I can just go ahead and twist it around my fingers to pop it up a little bit more. I don't really want my plants to be on the ground because then the bugs can find it easier. So as many things as I can prop up, I do. This will be my monster bell pepper. This is planted in a first year straw bale. My first scarlet runner beans. This plant has gotten quite large. I love those red flowers. It trails all anywhere it can get to. And this here is my first green beans of the season. Super cool. Underneath I have some strawberries. So strawberries and green beans work together um, as companion plants. So you'll see green beans sporadically throughout the strawberry bales. Trying some more peanuts. The peanuts are in second year straw and they started to flower. See, there's the first little flower on this plant. And if that flower gets pollinated, it will shoot down from the flower a little, I don't know what it's called, I forgot, stem type thing into the soil and it will make peanuts. These here are just a lot more of the same. I have cucumbers and different peppers together in each of these bales here with a peanut in the middle to add nitrogen to the soil. Some more strawberries with nasturtiums as companions and with another scarlet runner bean as a companion. Cucumbers. This one has lots of flowers. But back there is cucumelon number two. I'm very excited. <laughs> I believe these are lemon cucumbers. Let's see if we can find a female on there. Nope, no females yet. Looks like they're just males. Oh, there's a female about to open. Right there. So these will be more like a ball shape cucumber. And yellow when it's fully ripe. I just turned around here and this is my sunflowers growing up. planted the seeds from my largest mammoth last year over here and it looks like they may have been cross-pollinated because you can see some side shoots and that's not normal for a mammoth usually it's more like this where it's like one stalk with a head that will grow but this one is getting some side shoots so that seed must have been cross-pollinated with another sunflower variety. Some more bachelor buttons next to my pluot. That has one little tiny pluot growing. Declan keeps trying to pick it. He thinks it's like the tomatoes right next to it. <laughs> so let's go through this tomato area. These are the yellow pear tomatoes. I'm not sure that any of them have turned yellow yet. But they're getting to be the right size, so we should get some of those pretty soon. I'm trying to keep it pruned back so that they don't grow out of control, but man, you just give it like a week of not paying attention to this side and <laughs> they grow crazy. <laughs> There are some striped tomatoes in there. They'll be striped aromas. These are Mikados. 
think I found my first red tomato. Sturgeons in through here that are trailing all throughout. These are cherry tomatoes, and I see a few starting to turn. They're still a little bit orange. I'll give it a day or two. Let Ruby come pick them. She'll be so excited. Last year, at the end of the season, we um, had to pull the old tomato plants, and Ruby cried. So she will be so pleased. Oh, I see one red. She will be so pleased to see that. Our first little tomatoes are growing. Yum. This forest here is exactly why you gotta be on top of pruning your tomatoes. Like I can almost not even get through here because I spent, you know, a week doing goats. <laughs> I'm gonna have to come in this afternoon and really tie everything up and get everything going, but just coming in and seeing what's going on inside of my tomato forest. Planted with the tomatoes, I have marigolds and onions. Lots of tomatoes growing. We just need them to get ripe. We will wait for you, you'll be worth it. You can see these romas are starting to get big, getting close. This will be about a plum-sized tomato when they're ready. I believe these are the golden plums. Here I have a full row of striped romas. I really wanted to be able to make a lot of sauce this year, so I planted a lot of romas. And I thought striped would just make it fun and interesting. Let me help you pollinate since I'm walking by you. Some more striped romas in there. These are a surprise for me. Someone gifted me these seeds and I had never heard of it before. It's called Zebra Mallow. They're really just the most adorable flowers. So naturally I had to put them in the garden. <laughs> and right by tomatoes, so they'll get pollinated. So right now I'm working down my rows of first year straw bale tomatoes. So we've already gone through three rows now. And I planted them, I started here one week, then the second week, then the third week, and so on down. So you can see really like the progression as they've grown. Even though they're different varieties, it gives you an idea of really how much they grow each week. These are the last ones I planted. It's time to water. <laughs> They really grow a lot from week to week. This is where I just was coming in and looking at these potato leaf variety. Check and see if there's any. So these are the summer sunrise tomatoes. That'll be a nice beef steak size. So I have two of them side by side. And planted with them is some basil. Basil is a companion plant for tomatoes. I also like to put herbs like cilantro and parsley in with the tomatoes as companion plants. It is now a really good time for me to get cilantro in. Last year I planted it too early and it just grew too big too fast. I wasn't able to like harvest it at the same time as my tomatoes. So I this week will be getting a bunch of cilantro in. Yum. Salsa. 
these are a variety that my toddler took the tag out from. So I'm not 100% sure what type these are. But this one looks like it's starting to turn. It's always fun to garden when you have helpers, isn't it? These will be the rainbow cherries when they're ready, but they're not ready yet. Here, I'm just gonna show you um, what to do to really help a plant grow healthy and strong. If you let it bush out too much, you'll end up with a lot of diseases. So here you can see, this is the main stalk here. And then this is a sucker. This can turn into a full plant if you accidentally lopped off this whole part here. Um, but I'm not gonna lop off this part. I'm gonna lop off the sucker. And they come off really easy when they're little like this. I actually will take off all of the suckers from the bottom like three or four inches so that this plant will focus more on growing up and focus less on trying to grow the suckers and bushing out. So each leaf will grow a sucker between the leaf and the main stem. Sometimes you'll get too far along and you won't be sure which stem is the main stem, but if you look down and see, I'll get close on this one. Here you can see the leaf here, and then the main stem and the sucker in between. So you just pull those off. And once my plant gets to be like a couple feet tall, I'll leave a few suckers and let it branch out more. But I really want there to be a lot of airflow down, especially towards the base of the plant so that it doesn't get blight or any other diseases. I'll just show you that one more time. Here I've already done a lot of the suckers on the bottom, but over here you can see this is the, make it that angle right, this is the leaf, this is the sucker, and this is the main stem. So you just pull that sucker right out. If you let it go too long and the sucker is too big you'll actually need to come in with like some scissors or something but this one was when you get them when they're really little like this they're really easy to just pull right off this is my first rainbow cherry tomato they'll have like multicolored on them golden queen tomato still growing and these are the cherokee purples i had a few cherokee purples growing last week on this plant here I let this plant get too big before I put it in the ground and the tomatoes were not thriving. They were getting blossom end rot. So if you notice that on your plant, go ahead and pull them off because they're not going to be very good tomatoes anyways and let the new tomatoes grow. I've got my pickles all in a row. These cucumbers will um, grow up these vines like these ones and or not these vines these wires and uh, one thing that is important to remember with cucumbers is not to plant too many strong herbs near your cucumbers it actually stunts them the only thing that's really good to put by it is dill this is the bed that i just pulled potatoes out of <clears throat> this was second year bales that have been used for many things so far and this week I'll go ahead and put like some bricks around it to kind of like keep those bales a little bit closer together. And I plan to put ground cherries in here and maybe some more cucamelons. Now check out the size of these artichokes. So like I had said before, I planted most of my artichokes all at the same time except for one. This one was planted at the exact same time as these two. They all got compost and then mulched. The big difference here is this one went just right above the soil with some hardware mesh underneath it. Where these ones went into second year straw bales and then in between the two of them I also put some edamame soybeans that will bring nitrogen back into the soil. And these plants are so big. So if I ever were to wonder if second year straw bales are still worth their weight, they are. 
So this here in between the two was the straw bale. I kind of like spread it out between the six feet here of this bed. And they're doing really well. There's several flowers growing, starting here, the artichoke heads that we'll eat. It's pretty great. Definitely love me my straw bales. We're gonna go through these bales here that are along this fencing here. This is all pallets, as you can tell. I put those up to keep the geese from coming into the garden. It's worked really well. And I thought, oh, I might as well put some straw bales along the outside and plant some garden. And the only problem I can really see with that logic is that some spots, the pallets are wide enough that the geese can eat the plants through but I guess that's their choice and they can have it if they want it so I got to be quick through here because I'm running out of time the sun is getting hot I've got several different tomato varieties here these are the rattlesnake beans that are really vining all throughout I have them here with a watermelon that I'm hoping that these will feed the watermelon the nitrogen from the air putting it back into the soil and once that watermelon finds the roots it will really grow parsley, some other tomatoes. This is borage. It helps repel the tomato hornworm. So I have it around my tomatoes. Marigolds and chamomile. And I put this out yesterday to see if I could catch <laughs> some bugs. It's literally just an empty basin and I caught a whole bunch overnight of these pill bugs and the pill bugs will eat my plants I've seen them do it and it makes me sad so that's their new home here's a melon it really grew it was really tiny last week and it's taking off this week it's fun how some of them you'll put in at the exact same time and one of them decides this is the perfect spot I am gonna thrive and another one just doesn't Golden midget melon. So much. Oh my goodness, it's getting really hot. This is my largest watermelon so far. <laughs> it's doing pretty good. Oh, so then there's that one. Strawberries, mixed with watermelon. They are still in the shade for the morning, which is great. This chamoya tree just kind of like grew out of nowhere. I uh, water it with my laundry water, and it was like barely there last week. It's gotten really large. It's flowering, and hopefully, I'll get a lot of chamoya this year. You can see those. blowing out of my way. Chamoya tastes like fruit ice cream. Itty bitty little grapefruit on my grapefruit tree. The teeniest of the littlest just freshly pollinated guava, strawberry guavas. These will be the full size guava and you can see on one of them, there's a bug. It's a ladybug in larva form. So it can stay. These are my newest additions. Planting blackberries in these watering troughs because I don't want the blackberries to invade my whole yard. And I got them from a friend as just basically roots. And look, I've already got my first blackberries growing on them. They're the variety that's called Marionberry. I'm really hoping to make some jam. So I got this one planted late last night, like at 10 o'clock at night. And then I have these two still to go. This is my one-year-old blackberry bush. 
probably should not have actually put this one in the ground. I'm gonna have to dig it out eventually, but it's not gonna happen this year. Getting some blackberries. I've eaten a few already. very first little raspberry of the season. My toddler tried to eat it the other day when it was not red. <laughs> These are all um, planted in the ground, the berries, the raspberries and various blueberry bushes. I see some blueberries on there. It's getting really hot. Got some roses planted in with my banana trees. And down below, some pineapple. I let these sit in my counter in just water for about a year before I put them in the ground. Plumeria's getting bigger. I finally got around to um, mulching this bed here with the asparagus. This is second year asparagus. I probably did it too late. It was already starting to kind of yellow a little. But by next year this asparagus will be ready to harvest. The volunteer loofahs here are starting to get big enough that they're trailing up and hopefully they'll grow all the way up this cattle panel and I'll get a whole bunch. They were just little tiny sprouts last week. Isn't this just lovely? I love flowers. And sunflowers are just so much happiness. These are my rose bushes and I am actually intentionally growing, whoa wind, the rose hips. I use them with my soaps for my goat milk soaps. So we will be harvesting those rose hips. Loofahs. These are second year loofahs. I mean the plants are second year. This one was the one that just had flowered last week. It's already that big. And then these are the grapes, the Concord grapes that are starting to get larger. I like to vine things up this fencing here so that when people come to the end of this dead end which is our road and when they have to do a 20 point turn to get around that they can't really see my house as well it's a little more distracting than being able to just look down at my house you know the kitchen window so this is just one vine of loofah that's on its second year. And I haven't decided if I'm gonna put another one up. More loofah. Because I think I have a lot of loofah growing all over the place. Maybe this one will just really thrive and take over the whole fence by the end of this year. Well, I've milked my goats. I've collected some eggs, and now I have my tomatoes. I'm gonna chop them up and make some omelets for the kids, and start our day. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please let me know you were here. Say hi down in the comments, and um, enjoy your day. This is Christy with Sapphire Skies Farm. I hope you get a chance today to get outside, get your hands dirty, and enjoy some sunshine. Bye.